All right, so today I wanted to make a video on Web Dev Cody kind of pseudo reacting to my video where I essentially react to power couples, how to get ahead of 99% of software engineers, where I basically state the fact that a lot of these videos, they actually don't give good advice. If you've been programming for six to even a year, you will understand that this is very obvious tips. And another thing I point out is that when you Google this title, you will get just a plethora. I'm gonna make an exception for Web Dev Cody and myself since I basically am making fun of these types of videos and Web Dev Cody is doing a spin and taking a derivative on it. I want to give a shout out to Web Dev Cody. A uh, link to all of his stuff will be in the description below. Phenomenal individual, great engineer, and his takes are very, very good. And this is why we're going to react to it because he's going to give a different perspective and actually try to tell us things and teach us things to get ahead of the other developers. So I was scrolling through YouTube and I stumbled upon Melky's video here. He's a Twitch streamer, but he also makes YouTube videos, as you can tell. And one of the videos that I wanted to make something in response to was how to get ahead of 99% of software engineers. But I do want to kind of give my opinions on how you can kind of get ahead of some other developers and what I think is important to learn. I've been coding for almost 10 years in the industry and there's a lot of different stuff you can learn, but some of the stuff they don't really teach that much in tech YouTube. All right. So the first thing that I highly recommend doing if you want to get good at developing, and this one might seem very, very simple and basic, but honestly, you'd be surprised how many people don't do this. And this is read the docs. Reading the docs is, I agree with Cody here. It seems so simple but genuinely not a lot of engineers, especially the ones who start in programming do this. The majority of programmers who are beginners actually try to find video tutorials or blogs created by other people, other individuals, other engineers explaining concepts or explaining how to do something using a particular stack or technology. Not a lot of developers actually go to the docs first thing. I know I essentially had the same behavior, but once you kind of go through that initial intimidation factor, you will realize the power and how much time you save reading the docs. It's gonna be like a meme here where why spend six hours debugging when you can just spend five minutes reading the docs? You know, all this thing, it's like a very, very popular meme in tech. This is something that I need to remind myself to do all the time. I have fallen victim to this. And when you start getting into more complicated systems and you have to deal with like AWS, reading the AWS docs, although it does seem like a lot of information to kind of take in, there's so many different edge cases and limits that you're gonna run into with AWS. Yup. That's AWS, baby. Allocate a couple of days and just read through all of the documentation they have for AWS Lambda or I don't know, CloudFront, whatever service you're about to use. Make sure you have a good holistic understanding of how it works because if you don't, you're just going to start building together a solution that's going to be suboptimal. Right. And then you're going to run into weird edge cases where you have to go and make like requests from the AWS team to increase your limits because you built a system that didn't even have those limits in mind. So lack of foresight can really cause a lot of issues. Okay, so the second thing I recommend doing is learn how to ask the right questions, right? Now, if you're learning mm. the code, you might not really understand what that means, but when you get into the industry and you start talking to the clients and you have a team of different developers and you have like a tech lead and you have clients that you need to discuss things with, you need to understand how to ask the right questions. Okay. So if you get into a meeting where they're talking about adding features A, B, and C, you need to make sure that all of the different edge cases are being covered. This is a good point, but I want to say that this comes with experience. I mean, obviously the more you build, the more you read, you'll have that knowledge, but really, you know, asking the right questions and asking questions that save time takes time and experience. If you've never been working with, you know, let's use AWS, AWS, you may be asking tons of questions like, well, why is this timing out? Not knowing that there's a Lambda timeout uh, setting. So I agree that the more you get into development, you will naturally start to build better questions and it's efficient. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Yes, there are questions that are not the best or not the golden standard, but the more you work with systems and the more of those beginner questions you ask, you'll build the right knowledge to ask greater questions, more quality questions. Talking about adding a feature, you should ask some questions like how many users might need this feature. How popular will this feature be? What type of data will be needed for this feature? Mm -hmm. Should this feature be, be behind a feature flag? You need to get in the mindset of like always asking the questions. Always make sure that you fully right. thought about the problem you're about to solve. Imagine if a client comes to you. And a lot of these questions are also solved in like a technical documentation that's reviewed. So initially the way uh, a lot of big teams do it is if you have a feature or service you're building, you write a technical documentation or TDD and you have other engineers from your team and a greater, greater audience that will ask these types of questions, which you, you 
you will then incorporate into your TDD to make sure that you cover all of these cases, especially like should this feature be behind your feature flag or how do we want to roll it out and all of those things. I highly recommend having other engineers that are more senior, more experienced, review your doc or your proposal before implementing anything. Says, hey, we need you to build X, Y, and Z. Well, you need to understand what is the data you're going to be storing? How much traffic are they going to be getting? Making a system for 50 concurrent users a second is much different from making a system that supports thousands of concurrent requests a second. Building a social Agreed. media application might require a graph database versus building some type of block system might do fine with MongoDB or Postgres. Ugh, MongoDB? Cody, shame. You're going to be as a developer. So my third one I think is pretty important. This is one topic that I'm actually not seeing that much content on YouTube and social media. All right, let's talk about a fourth one that I think is super important. And that is learn to write documentation. Mm. Now, I think a lot of people when they're learning the code, they're trying to just focus on code. And a lot I should of add on this. It's not just learning to write documentation, learn to write about technical topics, whether they're intermediate, beginner, even advanced to a non-technical audience. That skill set will definitely set you apart, especially companies like such as Amazon or you know Netflix, where there is a emphasis on documentation. Having a good skill set to write will take you very, very far, arguably even further than someone who's just a wizard at implementing code. Not many people, that's all they care about. But honestly, the better you get at writing documentation, I think the more valuable you are as a developer, right? Documentation is the key way so that you can collaborate and communicate with other people on your team. So for example, if you are setting up a new process or doing migration scripts, make sure you document that process. Doing diagrams that really outline what you're about to implement. For example, let's say you get a new feature. You want to write some diagrams so that you and your teammates understand the approach we're about to take. All of those are money. I mean, especially to a non-technical audience, if you can explain a system workflow using just a flow chart, trust me, that is much, much better than like an in-depth lucid chart where you have all these systems, databases, all communicating. A non-technical person, even someone who's maybe beginner or not familiar with all the intricacies in your lucid chart diagram could get kind of lost. So flow charts and, you know, any kind of visual is always a plus. Sometimes it is hard to do that. If you work at a very niche team, you can't just expect extend yourself and be like, hey, can I work with you? Like collaboration is very important. And a lot of people do think like, oh, I can do this myself. I'm the greatest programmer ever. I watched the primer gen. No, 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 no. I'm gonna go ahead and say the last one is master debugging. Debugging, Classic. as I said in other videos, debugging is probably one of the most debugging. important skills when it comes to oh, software it because a lot of focus is on writing the code. But honestly, there's times where you spend hours, if not days, just trying to fix various bugs. So learn how to use your debugger. I would argue debugging is a more valuable skill than actually writing the code. Uh, and I will definitely make a video about this, but a good debugger, a good individual who knows how to identify the root cause of a problem and solve it much quicker than someone who struggles about that is worth way more. But there's different strategies for debugging. Understand how and where you have to find your potential bugs. So learn how to read the error messages and you'll just become so much better than a lot of other developers who are just kind of laughing. like, they see an error and they freeze. It's like a deer in the headlight. They don't know how to- I love how he's laughing about it too. Cause it's like, wow. I bet he felt kind of silly writing that. It's like, obviously. You know, learn from the error. Read the error. Understand what it's saying. Get good at all your error messages. Make sure you... Just get good. Just get good. That was a great video. Again, shout out to Cody. Uh, great individual. Great engineer. Agree with majority of his points. And I truly think the way he explained it, this type of content, I have absolutely no problem with because it's good expertise. It's good suggestions. It's really good advice that people kind of forget because they look at other videos, like the ones I initially covered, and they just talk about, you know, very simple things things, you know, do more project or things like that, but they don't go into the substance of what that truly means. So big shout to Cody for doing this video justice. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you want more videos. And as always, you got a power.